This week on Sister to Sister, my daughter's heart has been broken. What do I do? And you're smiling. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Not my daughter, the viewer's daughter. Okay, I was just curious. Well, here's a question for you. Can you really be happy with less? Yeah, no, we're gonna find out, so don't go away. Hello and welcome to Sister to Sister. If you have never tuned into our show before, let me tell you, we are five opinionated, beautiful Christian women. But today we are so excited to have a special guest. Christy Watt is on the panel today with the sisters. Yay. Yay. Yeah, Yay, but I just I just want you to know, in case you don't know Christy Watt, Christy, well, she's an author, hello. Mm -hmm. And your book, Talk Yourself Happy, is actually on the Amazon bestsellers list and you're number four. Well, here for African American for the month of January for African American. Um, authors. I always have to say, you know, because there's a lot of authors. And so it came out January 3rd. Buy yes. it now. Good, good, good. <laughs> oh, so, good. so, yeah, so it's doing good. good. God is Thank faithful. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for being with us. And Christy was a co host on the 700 Club for many, many years. So, you know, perhaps you recognize her, and we're so happy that she's with the CTVN family now. Yeah. And we're especially happy she's on the panel. So, bring it. <laughs> Oh, right. I, it, it's it's brought. All right, here we go. It's, it's, here we go. Yeah. This is this is an interesting. This is an interesting it. question. We we all checked out an article that was in somewhere, and it was about about people turning, trying to turn men into women. Now I'm not talking about transgendered. We're talking about um, dress, dr emotionally, and all this jazz. So what do you have, girls? You know that? Oh, well, that was Charisma, I think, news. Charisma Magazine, right. I, I have such a different take on this. Hmm. When I sat back and really thought about this, I thought, okay, what is our country? What is our culture? And, you know, I, in my opinion, it's a cultural thing. Mm -hmm. We were an agrarian industrial society, predominantly, 50, 60 years ago. You know, men wore the flannel shirts and the rugged jeans and the boots, and they still do. And now we're more of a technological service society. So men have to dress a little differently to reach their audience. I, I didn't have really a problem with this article, I mean, a problem with the things they were saying. Maybe my sisters will. But I feel it's just a culture. We dress according to the culture and the times more so than we. I think are influenced by a femininity or a masculinity. That's my opinion. I, th I think our producer was saying too that, that teachers have to teach down so that, let's mm -hmm. say that they're doing um, an art project and the little boys just want to be out running, but no, 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 you have to color. What, what do you think? Well, I'm curious. Let's clarify the question a little bit more in the sense of are we trying to feminize men in the, tent, in the sense of emotional? Or, or from their dress. I'm not clear. Um, well, it's I all of it, yes. I wrote down a quote. It said, unlearning toxic masculinity. And so basically they were dealing with one situation with anger. I followed a couple of links on this article just to sort of bring it a little more light. And, and I think that men should not be soft. That the man should be a man. And they're like, they're using anger. and they're, Like when men are angry for the right things and the right causes, it's called passion. You know, I'm, I'm passionate about this. It seemed like they were just trying to take them down a level and to not emotionally, and it talked about how they dress, skinny jeans, and it just seems so soft and cozy. And I thought, that's not a man. A man, go to, go to King David or, or Jesus or Paul when you're finding out like what a man looks like. Don't let society and culture tell you what a man should look like. Mm. Do you have anything for me, wisdom of flow? Well, <laughs> of course. Um, I, I, I am really trying to articulate this in a way that'll be palatable to you as the hearers. So pray for me much, okay? Go ahead, you um, go. <laughs> number one, a man is designed and created by God just as a woman 
was. And so there are certain characteristics and traits that God has innate placed in them. I don't think you should be fooling around with that. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's my response to that. Right. I am not looking for a man with effeminate ways. I don't want my husband bumping me out the mirror mm -hmm. so that he can put mascara on and put a little makeup on. I have some challenges with that. Um, I, I did catch the part where they were just trying to maybe make them a little more sensitive and, and coach them in that. And I can understand right. that to yeah. a degree. But the part that I read seemed that they were leaning a little more towards mm -hmm. a dangerous zone yeah. to me. Well, I'm going to lean a little to the next question because mm -hmm. I think this is a little bit confusing. Mm -hmm. But check it out in Charisma Magazine. Mm -hmm. But this next question was from a viewer. And we don't want to ever discount the viewer. We, we want to get to your emails. And we thank you for this one. Mm -hmm. And actually she wrote, my daughter's heart has been broken her first time. So it must be first relationship. And I just don't know what to do or say. What should she do, Christy? That is such a hard one. I, you know, I instantly just zoned back to 13, 14 years old when I had a crush on Brian Allard. Remember? You, Brian. you missed out. Mm. Um, <laughs> you missed out, Brian. He did. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> no um, he's... Anyway, I'm all distracted and flustered. <laughs> I'm, anyway, no, but you know what? I think what we can do as moms is just love them, love them right yes, where they are exactly. because heart, heartbreak really is it's a part of life. It's a part of, yes. Well, are you going to tell your 13-year-old son about Brian when he comes home and has a heartbreak? No, but what I will do is go beat up that girl who broke his heart. Okay. But, um, <laughs> in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. No, that's so unchristian. I know. Let's bring it back to the Lord. Bring it back to the Lord. You guys go because I'm, I'm digging a hole. I went, I went right back to my almost junior year, entering in my junior year with Sean, who, you know, we broke up. And I remember that first broken heart. And it might be the only time I've ever cussed in my life. Oh, I mean, Susie Sunshine, I think. You know, as soon okay. as you, you see this guy with another girl, you're just like, this stinks and nothing you can say. But you know what I would recommend now? I would recommend them get the book, Talk Yourself Happy. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Right? Yes. Come on now. There you you can there, good plug. Talk good yourself plug, happy. <laughs> Thank you very much. What do you have? What are you going to tell the mother to tell the daughter? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I'm thinking more about the mother because we're mother. talking about our own situations. Yeah. Um, you know, to encourage the mother uh, to remember that, I, I believe it's in Psalms 35 where it talks about God is close to the brokenhearted yes. and he saves the crushed in spirit. Yes. And so for the mother to first seek wisdom on how to minister to the child, because right. sometimes because we forget, you know, what it was like when we were teenagers and we yeah. kind of, it's no big deal, you know, in another six months, you won't even be concerned who it. he yeah, is. Right. But at, for that moment at that time, it is very important to that child. Yeah, so you want to be sensitive for how, how you minister. Right. That was a really that's good right. word. A good that's distraction. Go go get good. ice cream and talk or well, a I coffee or I wouldn't really here. get ice cream if you want to pay attention to this next question, yeah. really, which <laughs> is, could living with less <laughs> make you happier and healthier? And I loved how you said less pounds, yes. Less <laughs> ice cream, yes. Less money, no. So right. what do you think about this living with less? May I, may I jump in on this Please. one? Okay, I, for the viewers who don't know me and for those who do know me, um, just to kind of give you a real summation, I worked at uh, the 700 Club. I was, you know, one of the lead hosts. I was a top reporter, producer, writer. I traveled the world. I made good money. I had all these wonderful things. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is I wasn't happy mm -hmm. because I wasn't fulfilled. And in my mind, I kind of suffered from the if-then syndrome. Mm -hmm. If I just had a helpmate, I would be happier. If I was more appreciated, then I would be happier. If I, you know, was this, That's I would right. be more uh, happier. Mm -hmm. And God took me to a point in my life where literally I had nothing. So I had no job. My money was at zero. I still didn't have a man. Um, all the things that I had found my significance, my value, and my That's happiness. Good in on, were completely good. gone. Even physically, I'd gained over 20 pounds, almost 30 pounds. Mm -hmm. But what the Lord did do was he drew me away from the things that were temporary, that gave me temporary wow, pleasure. And he good. drew me into the heart of him mm. who is permanent and, yes, and consistent right. and unchanging. Mm -hmm. And so in that process, what made me happy was really what I was looking for. I wanted to be fulfilled. And that fulfillment was hope, peace, joy, love, and right. all the things that I really desired, not happiness. Mm -hmm. And so can less make you happy? Absolutely, because the key, when people say they want to be happy, we have to listen to what they're saying. Are they saying they want to have hope? 
Do they want peace? Do they want to feel fulfilled? Do they want to have love? And only those entities can be found in the present and love of Jesus yeah. Christ. Because I think some people, when they talk about happy, they're talking monetarily. Correct. You know, mm -hmm. and we have to remember in Ecclesiastics, you know, it assures us that money can be a great servant, but it's a horrible master. Right. You know, and so you have to remember, like the nomads live a long, healthy life because all of their needs are met. Right. Well, I think that, did it take you a long time to discover this? That's what I wanted to ask you. So you lost your job. Did it take a long time? No, this all happened about three and a half years ago. And the pain was so great that all I had was mm. Jesus. And it's something about when your friends are gone, your money's gone, um, all the accolades are gone, that mm -hmm. all you have is Jesus. And when you have him through the word of God, the person of God, um, the heart of God, you know, when you get slapped in the face, it doesn't take you a long time to say, Al, help me. That's so good. So That is so good. And I think, honestly, when you talk about less money, mm -hmm. less things, mm -hmm. it's about having a simpler life, mm -hmm. a more peaceful, peace-filled life. That's, good, That's yeah. all the things that you just said. I love that. Yeah. And I hope that you love watching Sister to Sister as much as we love bringing it to you. And I hope, honestly, that you would perhaps consider becoming a sponsor with us. And we have a great way for you to do that. So you can check that out. And you can also check out the number on the screen. It's on there all the time. And you could call 24 seven. There's someone there and they'll pray with you and love you up. Hey, welcome back. You're watching Sister to Sister. We're excited because Christy Watts is with us. You might recognize her from the 700 Club all these years, and now Perfect. she's with us Yay. here on Sister to Sister today. We're so happy. And I don't know how you're gonna feel about these questions, so <coughs> just jump in. I'm easy. All right, good. Well, here, here's the question. This is interesting. Are you a mama? Which means mothers against more activities. So, are we over scheduling our children? Are we giving them more opportunity, or are we just making too much? So, you have it, little it, ones. Yeah, it's a constant tension because, you know, with three kids, they're all in activities. Even my junior in high school now is like, Mom, I need to do this next year so it looks good on my applications for college. So, now it's scheduling things that's what's going to look good for college applications. So it's like, oh my gosh. So we just kind of came up with a plan. You know, three kids going in all kinds of different directions can make you really crazy. So they do one sport and one musical thing every like season. Well, Amy, who's so telling it's them it's gonna look better on their college application? I mean, I'm just wondering, where is this pressure? Where is this coming from? Um, I don't know. The high school? I the, think that they're just advising them. They're giving them advice the from colleges. counselors and colleges are coming in and they're, you know, when you have leadership things on there, it looks great. When you have team sports on right. your applications, it looks great. It, anything to make you come up to another level, it include, it, you get scholarships for this and that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, there is pressure There's to do a lot, a lot of, of things. A, right. What about your 13 year old? Well, you know, I'm a big proponent of balance just in life. Amen. You, ha you Amen. have to be balanced. I mean, I, I sometimes go to these sports teams and I see the parents and they're <laughs> screaming and yelling at the kids and oh the kid's my. 10 years old. I'm like, seriously, is soccer gonna be their life? Yeah, no. And <laughs> yeah. so when we were growing up, my parents would always say, they would, even though we would get A's and B's, they would say, we would rather you get a B but that you did do, you know, the one thing that you really liked mm -hmm. is cheerleading and that you had friends and that right. you were able just to play outside Absolutely. and right. get vitamin D with the sun. Amen. So when it comes to my son who does do piano, a, a mm -hmm. musical and then a sport, that's okay. But he'll tell me he wanted to do um, de the debate team because brother loves the debate. Don't get me started. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. Good. Speaking right. as a lawyer. As good. a lawyer. But <laughs> he came home himself. I said, did you sign up? He goes, no. I said, why? He goes, he goes because it's, it's off my, on my off day, and mom, I don't, I don't, I, I need a break. Yes. Good for him. And I good love for that yeah, because he recognized good. that he needed to break. And not for nothing, as a single mother, I need a break. I don't want to drive you around everywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, That's yeah. That's yeah. Just too much. What That's about good. you, Roxy? Because you raised five children. Right. And, you know, I, I'm going to go back to something that I thought about when I was pregnant with my first child. And when we had showers at our church, we always had a time of prayer. And one woman prayed over me, and I hopefully I'll never forget it. Roxanne, you train up the child in the way he or she should go. Mm -hmm. So I think God says he tests the motives. 
He, a man looks good to themselves, but he tests your motive. Do you want to enrich your child so that they're a better person, they're a team player, they're, they learn leadership skills? Are you looking for a trophy? Mm, Are you the parent that just wants yeah. to bring home that's the certificate really right. or the trophy? And then years right. later, when I ask my son, oh, go to the meeting, you're going to get a certificate for doing well in football. He said, Mom, you just want me to go so you look good. Oh, wow. And I thought, oh, son, you are so right. You don't need to go. Right. <laughs> but when the mother of the quarterback said to me, my son doesn't go in there unless your son, the left tackle, is protecting him. See, my son was about his skill, not about him getting trophies and certificates. Mm -hmm. And he adjusted me again mm -hmm. after the prayer years ago to remember the focus is the motive. What's oh, the yeah. reason? Because wow. when that college, when they interview you and say, why did you go into that? You're gonna have to go have a good heartfelt mind reason why you entered or you obtained that skill. Wow. But really I, I'm so for good. the enrichment. I, I love it. And she love that. Too, like in this article, she's like, I just want to move to Finland and just be like out in the air. And it's like, you know, God, we have a God-given purpose and a mandate to accomplish here on earth. And we have this time and this season. So why can't we get them, like you said, in their gifting and in their skill set? Right. So they sharpen That's and good. they become really good at something so that they can impact the community and, and the world. That's right. And Amy, talk about being really good at something. Are you good at giving advice, which I think you are. But here's another viewer question. So I'm all about that for you, because I love you. Here's what you wrote. Dear sisters, I hate my friend's new boyfriend. He is totally wrong for her, but she thinks he's the one and she gets hurt when I don't go with them and hang out with them. So I'm afraid to lose the friendship if I tell the truth. Should you tell the truth? Well, you already know my answer to That's that. That's true. You know I'm gonna say tell the truth. But I will say this. Um, not, we say tell the truth in love, which is scriptural, but also love has wisdom with it. Mm -hmm. And so I believe it's in 1 John where it talks about hate. See, hate is the key word here. Yes. Hate oh, yeah. will cause yes. you to walk in darkness, mm -hmm. therefore making you blind, which is going to cloud your judgment That's and your presentation yeah. to your friend. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. We say that all mm -hmm. the time. But, you know, um, if you want a friend, you must first show yourself to be friendly. So am I presenting this in a way that will bring healing? We all have the ministry of reconciliation. The other thing is what makes you so sure he's not the one? Just because you don't like him doesn't mean oh, he's not the good. one for her. Right. So you have to watch that you're not walking in a spirit of judgment and criticism. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be very careful about that, you know? Um, we have a little saying, Christy, you know, you, people give away a piece of their mind and tell you after a while you recognize you gave away all your mind. Mm -hmm. So you need to keep <laughs> some of your pieces of your mind. <laughs> Would you Don't tell? Tell? A I fool speaks their whole mind, yeah. you know? That's good. So, yeah. Would you tell? You know, it's interesting. It really depends on who the person is. I'm yeah. one of five kids and four mm -hmm. sisters. Mm -hmm. And so we will definitely be candid with each other. But I've learned in life, as you guys know, it's not so much what you say, it's how, how you, you say, say it. Yeah. That's and good. one of the That's things good. that I've learned from by the example of Jesus is that whenever Jesus approached a person or situation, he always began with a question. Mm -hmm. yes. And so I think one of the ways that we can disarm a person is by asking them a question. Oh, is what is it about this person that you like? Mm -hmm. Why is it that you're drawn to this person? Mm -hmm. Because then it makes that person kind of exactly. give an assessment That's of good. why and this and that. And then that person might reveal something about that relationship that you as an outsider don't know. Don't even mm -hmm. see. Yes. Would you good. tell? Oh yeah, I think if it was a friend, but it, it has to be, what was it? What is the, like she said about questioning, right, questioning your own motive for mm -hmm. saying it. Mm -hmm. And what is it that really bothers you? Because as Flo said, hate is a strong word. Mm -hmm. He who yes. hates his brother yes. is like a murder. So That's hate is right. a strong That's word. Right. What is specifically did he do or does mm. that creates problems for you? And if it's gonna hurt your friend, as she said, question yeah. it out of her. Right, mm -hmm. and you know, we had a question about what was the worst advice you ever gave. And I said, the advice that you gave that was unsolicited. If she's not asking you, I mean, you're asking us, we're the sisters, we're not gonna call your girlfriend. Um, yeah. If you're not asked, I would say zip But it. what if yeah. you see an absolute train wreck and they're yes. yoking up with somebody that is just using them or could drag them down? I think there's certain situations you would step in. Well, here's what, here's what I'm gonna tell you about yeah. that. I'm gonna give you 1 Thessalonians <laughs> 5. 
because here's what it says. Rejoice always, pray continually. So pray, should I talk to the girl? Give That's thanks right. in all That's circumstances good, for this is God's will for you. Yep. Is this possible? How do you do this? Can, I just want to jump in on this one because I see people take this scripture out of content quite right, a bit. Right, and good. people will take it and they'll say, you know, um, thank God for everything. And, th you know, and uh -huh. no, that's not it. There's a difference between a circumstance and a situation. You understand? Mm -hmm. And so when I'm dealing with something, uh, I'm dealing with cancer. I'm not thanking God for that cancer. Right. I don't care what you come in the room and tell me, okay? But I will thank God that I have good medical uh, insurance, that I do have good doctors, I have the best doctors, that, you know, God is still a healer mm -hmm. and my family is still intact and he's using this to draw my family closer together. Mm -hmm. So we have to watch what we do. Um, sometimes we take scripture out of content. And so he says, in, in all things, give him thanks. I'm not thankful necessarily for the situation. Mm -hmm. If somebody goes for or goes through abuse, mm -hmm. you know, you want to tell me, oh, thank God my husband just punched me in my face. Are you kidding me? That's you right. know, so, no, go, go, you know, girl. but mm -hmm. thank God that there are shelters out there. Thank God that there are counselors out there that I can go and get help. Right. Oh my oh. gosh. So pray continually. Yep. Mm -hmm. What do you have for me? Well, you know, I was, I was uh, when Flo mentioned the whole abuse thing, that did mm -hmm. rise up. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of times you have to figure out what the situation and circumstances. Mm -hmm. If your girlfriend is in a relationship and mm -hmm. clearly harm mm -hmm. has, is coming to her physically, mentally, emotionally, mm -hmm. then whether she gets mad or doesn't get mad, sometimes you cannot That's be okay. politically mm -hmm. correct. You say, come on, girl, mm -hmm. and snatch her, right. mm -hmm. snatch her into reality. Right. And so, but once again, I do think it depends on the situation. I think prayer mm -hmm. it, uh, it precedes everything because yes, the Lord will give yes, you the wisdom, yes. what to say, how to say it, including when, when to, to say it. Right. Yeah. That's right. Because with women, you know, there are times where we're more receptive and other times don't talk to the hand. That's so right, right. the Lord will well, tell you when. Yeah. I think so too. And what Flo referred to is rejoice always. Sometimes you don't feel like rejoicing, mm -hmm. but God says in his word, pray continually. Mm -hmm. So we hope that we have touched you with some of the things that we have said here today. And again, I reiterate, there's a number at the bottom of the screen and someone is there. They will pray with you and love you just like we do. So stay right there. We're going to wrap this thing up. We hope you enjoyed the show today. We loved having Christy Watts on the panel. She yes. brought the heat, baby. <laughs> and I tell you what, we like to end sister to sister with a scripture. And today it is from Romans 12. And it says this, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. I mean, and that's a lot of admonishment right there. I mean, keep your spiritual fervor, serve the Lord, be joyful. The only way you can do that is if you know Christ. And we're praying more than anything that you will come to know, trust, and believe in the love that God has for you. And you know what I love? We also end with another scripture, but before that, how about this? Amy got the scripture that said, have zeal. Right? Yeah. right? Right. So who has more enthusiasm and love yeah. for life and for the Lord than our Amy? And again, I thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. What did you think, thank sisters? You, oh, we love you guys are the bomb. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm honored. It's Good. Fun. Good girl. Great to have you. And as I said, we end with the scripture, but we end with this one too. This is our favorite. As iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a woman, or in this case, a sister, sharpen the other. You see, these girls make me a much better Kathy. And we thank you for writing in to us. We thank you for your email questions. Sometimes they're hard, but we're going to answer them all the time because that's what we do here on Sister to Sister. And we also tell you that we love you. Call us. We'll pray for you. Our people are here 24-7. That means they'll pick up the phone and answer and pray with you. See you next time on Sister to Sister.